Hello and welcome to Infinity. In another video, I described the uh, color dominance model, the 3M model. And in this video, I'm going to show you the macros of how you can do that very quickly and something of how you can use that. Just as a summary, imagine this are the colors in a pixel. So the pixel, you've got a little slot of red, a bit of green and some blue. And together they make up this, this kind of purpley color for that one pixel. But also think, what if you could split them apart? So you, that the, the maximum color here, I can split them up so that this, I can identify the maximum, the minimum and the middle color. And those are all on separate layers. So for this particular pixel, the red is on the maximum layer. The green is on the minimum layer and the blue on another layer again with the middle colors. But on another uh, pixel, those could be all different again. But it means you can make sense by saying this is the dominant color here. This is the recessive color. And this is the color which is the supportive color in the middle. And that can help you decide how to edit your picture. Let's take an example here. First of all, we're going to set up the macros. And the way to get to those is you go down below here, there's a link. Follow the link, that'll take you to a place to another link to download the macros. You'll also find at the bottom of the page, or that page, if it, you can't download from the top link, the bottom one will let you download as a zip file. You'll also see the, the version 1 ones, which I've left accessible if you want to use them. Um, because it's now version 2, because I found that using procedural texture as a calculating engine is far more efficient than using apply image. So in other words, they should all calculate faster because I've redone the other macros doing the same thing, procedural texture, faster. So if you go to view, when you downloaded this studio and library, and then at the library at the, along the top here, hit the hamburger, and say import macros, your macro will look somehow like this. Double click that and it just appears open up down here. So here's the ones I've covered in other videos and here are the 3M dominance ones. I'm going to cover the bottom one, the gaps one, in another video. But for this one here, let's see what we can do with it. So I'll just click the 3M dominance, see how long it takes. That used to take with apply image, absolutely ages. Now it's done. So if I open this, you can then see there's maximum, middle, and minimum. So if I alt click the top one, this says the highest value color of RGB in the sky is unsurprisingly blue. Similarly, in the C here and also in round here, you've got other bits, but the, you know, the main color here is red and so on, and green in vegetation, unsurprising. You can then use this in various ways, but what you have to be careful about, if you do something like you put in, say, a curves layer and say, I'm just going to work on this top layer. So this is just on the dominant color. If I start tweaking this, you st soon start to see where the edges are, because this is a hard edge to this. So you can see here it, it, it just transitions rather quickly. You can blur it, but that also gets problematic. So far, I think the best use of these is for masking. So if I go to alt click this one again, control zero to see where it is, this area here, I could just use the red to pick out most of this and then just mask off the rest with a paintbrush. I could do for this, I could take a copy of this and play around getting rid of the red and the green, but it's easier done down here. So here you can see it's already on the layer here in the channels tab. So I can just go to the right click on the max there. If I say create a grayscale layer, then here we go. I'm going to just take that right to the top. and I'm going to turn off this one now. I've now got this grayscale, which shows me here. I could, could have used that as a mask as well. I can convert this to a mask. I can do things like, in, let's get a paintbrush here. And I'm going to paint in black to get rid of the bits that I don't want to use as controls. I can paint those out. Uh, and I can also say, let's just kind of like make this go solid up to white. And uh, a way of doing that is simply go to a curves here and just pull 
which way is it this way? The right one to the left and everything then goes solid white. And there's a bit more, a few more things there. Let's turn the brush down. I'm not going to get that background stuff. But I'm going to leave the things around here. That's okay. But this is looking a bit jagged. So I'm going to do a quick... Uh, where is it? Ah, wrong one. There we go. Blur. What was I thinking? And just turn up the blur to soften that a bit so I don't get hard edges on my mask. And there we go. And I can then go right click on that and say rasterize to mask. Like now I've got myself a mask which I can see and you can see there it's already selecting this area. And if I actually want to select more of the areas here I can just use myself a white brush to paint because I know painting on the mask itself which is going to pull out those things there which can very quickly take that and so on. So but to use the mask, I want to use it with another control. So if I can say put in a curves layer and what you can do with this, if I say select and deselect layers, then no layer is selected. So if I put in a curves layer, it's just going to appear at the top. There we go. And I can then take that mask and drag that up to the edge of this and then it's going to be applied to that. So now when I'm moving this now, I'm just controlling that area. In fact, I could say, let's just do the reds. So I can now say darken off the reds or increase the reds. And I can now say, I'm going to warm that up a little bit there. And then I'll say, okay, take the blues and pull that down to make it a bit more yellow. So I've just warmed this area up here quite neatly. See, it's all nicely selected. And I could even do something like I can take that layer there again Hit Control J to duplicate it. So I've got another curves here. Go to this mask here and just say Control I to invert it. So it's now doing everything but what I had. Go up to the curves, reset the curves and say, well, let's just now go to say to the blue and we'll darken the blues a bit. And now I'm changing, say, the blue in the ocean around here. And if I wanted the cyan, then I could do a bit more of the greens and so on. But by and large, there you've got a way of very quickly selecting useful areas of the image. Anyway, that's it. And thank you very much for watching.